Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Custom Objects Crash Course video series. This is video number three, uh, the advanced video for all you advanced people out there. My name is Roman Nahaniki. I'm with Linton. Uh, we also have our guest speaker and uh, technical custom objects technical guru extraordinaire, Winnie Heen. And she is a principal technical consultant at HubSpot. Uh, so Winnie, uh, tell us, give us a short uh, introduction uh, uh, about yourself and then we can kind of go through uh, the example we have for everyone, a uh, real use case example that we can kind of walk through the elements of a custom object with. All right, thanks Roman. So I'm Winnie and as a principal technical consultant at HubSpot, what I do is I work with some of our more advanced use cases. Usually that means they're more technical stuff. So things like working with custom objects, evaluating if it's a good fit, bad fit for your business process and for your portal, um, helping you implement it if you do go down that route, things of that, that nature. Um, things like custom integrations are also uh, very popular when working with a technical consultant. So um, we kind of come at things with a consultative lens of, is it a good fit for your business? And if yes, how do we go around uh, getting it implemented for you? Great, that's a, a great summary of what you do. And as we uh, see HubSpot being implemented in more enterprise level organizations, the implementations certainly do get more complex. So uh, please uh, know that you have folks like uh, Winnie at HubSpot and folks like uh, me at Linton that can help you with those complex questions. Uh, for today's course, we have a uh, a boat example, when you prepared that for us. So if you want to take us into that and we can kind of talk through the elements of custom objects. So we'll discuss when is it make sense to have a product library versus, versus a custom object. We'll talk about workflows and custom objects. And then we'll also talk about report capabilities with custom objects. That sounds great. All right. All right, so I have my portal open here and I'm going to navigate to one of my custom objects. So we can do that by going into our contact objects. So you'll see some of the standard ones here. And if I scroll up, I have a few, but the one we'll talk about today is the boat object. So this is my uh, custom boat object. I created it actually for a customer of mine that I'm working with. They are a boat manufacturer and they have a pretty complex data model for their, for their business. They work with dealers to sell their boats, but they are the ones that manufacture the boats and they still need to keep track of who buys the boats, who's servicing the boats. So in this case, we had an interesting uh, conversation around whether a product library and the line items would be a good fit here, or if we needed to go down the custom object route. And in this case, uh, we went the cost custom object route and the reason for that is because the HubSpot product library is really built for generic multiple inventory. So what that means is it's built for things like, you know, selling windshield wipers or maybe a particular model of a, a boat or a car. So maybe it's selling a Toyota Corolla. Uh, but in this case, we want to know the actual individual instance of say a Toyota Corolla that's sold. And so having that serial number, knowing who's a dealer that's servicing that car or that boat, that information is really important here. We want to be able to capture that individual instance. And because of that, the product library isn't a good fit here. Um, and so this is what you have. You have my boat example, where in this case, I only have four boats built out so far. Um, most people will have a lot more. And if we go into one of these objects, you can kind of see how they uh, look and feel which in my opinion is very similar to any of the other objects that we have in HubSpot. So this is one of the boats that I have. And so you'll see here that we have the regular activity timeline like everything else. You'll see all of the other objects that are the standard objects like companies, contacts and deals that are associated. Because this is custom, I control which objects I want it to be associated with or not that's kind of set up through the API. And then over here on the left, you'll see all of the properties that I have defined. So things like the color, the skew, the name of the boat, who's servicing or the boat, who they bought it from, 
all of that more kind of specific information that's uh, unique to this instance, all of that information is tracked here. So the cool thing about custom objects is that you can create it in any way that you want. Um, that's also the dangerous thing about it sometimes because you do want to think through what are the required fields I need in order to create it? Uh, what are the fields that I want to be searchable? What are the properties I want to display? But once it's all done and built out, it looks very similar to any of our other objects. I do also want to just go over here into the contact view so you can see what an object looks like uh, from here. This is one that we're all used to seeing. And you'll see that the boat object is attached here as a card, similar to all the other objects and you can see all the boats that are associated to this contact. That's, that's great, and, and thank you for showing this uh, to us, Winnie. So just to highlight your, I think you made a very important point around product library versus custom object. What we see here in this custom object, you have a boat and you have all those things attached to it that you wouldn't necessarily have attached to a line item in a product library. So the, you know, the, the person servicing the boat, the, the warranty, and you could even attach uh, warranty documentation. So really it's a very specific entity that is based on the specific boat, correct? That is correct, yeah. It has this kind of powerful way of capturing more data because um, usually most people will capture data like that on the contact object, maybe you'll have a group of properties down here. Yeah. But that gets kind of complicated and messy when you have multiple, like three boats. Are you going to do like boat one set of properties, boat two set of properties, boat three set of properties? When you have it here as a custom object, it's a lot cleaner to represent that data. That's great. Yep. Uh, and then talking about um, segmenting and, and personalizing the, the, the content of your object through a workflow or just in general. Can you talk us through uh, some options that we have there? Yeah, absolutely. I say that this is a very common request and, and question. If we're getting this data like boat ownership into HubSpot and into the CRM, how can we use that for segmentation and for personalization? And so the, the main way that we recommend to use that is through workflows. So I can kind of walk through an example now of how we would maybe fill that out. So I'm going to choose a, not a contact-based workflow because we can use a custom object here, but a custom object-based workflow. So my boat. And if I go into this page, I'll have the option to set the enrollment trigger, which is basically my segmentation. So very similar to what you would do when you're building out a list and segmenting there. And then I'll be able to take an action, which is sending out the email, which I'll be able to also personalize. So if I start up here with setting the enrollment triggers, maybe I wanna find everyone that owns a boat and the color of the boat is teal because I have some matching merchandise for them and that boat. I can go over here, search through the properties, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and select any boat that is teal. And so I can apply that filter and then segment out any contact that is associated to this boat that is teal. So that's our segmentation side. And then to send out the email, I'll just go over here, pick an email. This is one that I've already created, but it's an email that's saved for automation. That's kind of the criteria we need in order to access the personalization tokens. And if I open this up, you'll see that it lives in our regular uh, drag and drop editor. So very easy to use. And down here, I already have personalization tokens that I'm pulling from the boat. So the name of the boat, the color, which is teal, uh, the name of the dealer that's associated with it. So pretty powerful to be able to personalize based off of that custom object that I've added. And then you also can add personalization tokens for anything else that's associated with that object. So if I want to add maybe the first name of the contact, right, being like, hi, first name. Um, and then we have this boat information. I can add in the company information if it's relevant, deal information, 
uh, we're able to get a lot of data from our CRM to personalize this email for sending off to this segment. That's great. And I, I think to, to underline your examples, I mean, if you have teal related products, you can market to them, uh, to folks that have a teal boat. Also, if it's uh, another great example that we've seen is servicing. So if, if uh, folks need to service uh, their boat or their warranty is, is uh, expiring, those are also good times to send, uh, send emails or send reminders. So you can, you can be helpful and you can also let people know about your new products or related products that you have specific to the custom object uh, that you create. So really, uh, it's, it's a powerful tool that can be used uh, in, in not only for marketing purposes, but also for service and just kind of generally being helpful after, uh, after the purchase, a particular purchase, in this case, a boat is, has been made. Absolutely. All right. Um, now let's talk about, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about uh, uh, specific to workflows, Winnie? No, I think this is, I think you kind of hit it. The subscription object as well as, is one that I've heard of for custom objects right now. Um, using that to trigger renewal emails, the campaign, the reminders, 90 days, 60 days, 30 days out. That's also a, a great use case for workflows for that. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then let's talk about reporting because obviously people want to report on the number of teal boats so, sold to see maybe teal was popular last year, but not popular this year. Maybe purple is the popular color this year. So how do we, um, how do we handle reporting? How do we handle uh, you know, working with lists? Uh, kind of the, the, the data side of a custom object. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Let's hop over into the reporting tool and, and do a, a little uh, walkthrough of that. So custom objects can be reported on same as any of our other objects in HubSpot. You can do that in two places. So the single object will let you just look at uh, custom objects by themselves. But the other one that's really cool and really powerful is our custom report builder, which is newer. Uh, so this one has a lot of the functionality of the cross object, but with more like with custom objects. So if you're looking for cross, I would recommend this one for uh, custom objects. And so you can see here that there's a lot of stuff that we can cross our custom object with marketing information, CRM information, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see your list of custom objects that you have. So I think it might be helpful to walk through a, a example of a report that we could build out. I know this one can feel a little bit um, challenging to navigate sometimes, so always good to get practice in here. But let's say, um, let's say we wanna build a list of all the contacts that, like you said, have a teal colored boat, or we want a, a, a report of all the boats that have been sold by a certain color and have that bring in the contact information as well. So we'd be able to cross the contact, let's say the contact to get the email, and then we'll cross the boat to segment and filter off of. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And this is actually a, maybe a tip for working with custom objects when you're trying to find, find lists because it's not currently supported in our list tool. Um, if you go and build a list, a, a contact list or a company list right now, you won't see custom object there. It's coming in the pipeline, but it's not there just yet. So this is actually one of the ways that we'll work with uh, customers to help them segment and find those lists outside of the list tool. So I'm going to go ahead and build a, a list of contacts with the email addresses where we have a particular color of the boat. And so I'm going to select the table so that we can get that list. If I go over here, we'll be searching with the contacts and maybe I'll pull in the email. If you want their first name, last name, you can pull that information in as well. Let's say we want the first name. And so this is going to pull in all of the uh, information in this kind of table format that fits the criteria. Uh, the criteria or the way that we would segment would be under filters. 
And so this is going to be similar to the workflows tool, similar to the list tool. We're gonna segment here. So let's say I want to look at the color of the boat. Um, and so I'll drag that down here. And within it is any of teal. So it's same as what we had before. And then once I apply this, I don't have that many boats that are teal colored. So we'll just see this one co contact come up here. And then if you export this list, you'll be able to import this back in and it's your static list for, for segmentation purposes. It would make sense that Michael Scott would purchase the uh, teal colored boat, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, th this is very, uh, uh, very instructive and it really kind of, you know, think about us coming from a custom object showing you all of the elements that you can attach to a custom object from the, the owner to the warranty to any other service related items. And then you can use that uh, in a workflow based on the custom object properties or uh, based on the, the custom object properties and additional triggers. And then finally being able to report out on a custom object. So really, the, the power of and the flexibility of your HubSpot portal can be radically extended uh, using a custom object or even multiple custom objects uh, de depending, on, depending on your needs. So um, I think this has been really, really helpful. Any other uh, final thoughts or final insights, Winnie, as you, you know, you're, you're seeing this uh, every day, you're like the, uh, you know, the, you're like the high volume heart surgeon of custom mm -hmm. objects. So you, you've kind of seen it all. Any, any other um, tips or insights that you can offer? Yeah, I think that HubSpot's in a very interesting space with the addition of custom objects. It's just like you said, it's opened up so many possibilities with how we can help our customers map their data and represent the data the way that they really have it in their business. And I think that's kind of just the beginning as HubSpot's moving more and more into the enterprise and building out things like custom objects and other ways of controlling data, mapping data, working with different business units when you get into these really bigger and more complex um, enterprises. And so this is just the beginning. It's kind of the tip of the iceberg for HubSpot. And we have a lot more coming down the pipeline that's in beta, that's on the product roadmap for helping larger organizations, more complex organizations represent their data. So very exciting uh, to kind of see the future of HubSpot. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. And uh, uh, growth and scalability is, is always uh, a good thing. So thank you very much, Winnie, for your time and your expertise. Uh, thank you uh, viewers for joining us. If you do have questions, please reach out to HubSpot please reach out to Linton or both of us. We can certainly help you with your uh, enterprise customization needs around HubSpot, or really if, if you just have questions about uh, custom objects, we can help you as well. Uh, so thank you and uh, take care and see you soon. Bye. Bye.